having looked at the idea of the authority of the Bible and examined some of the basics of how we got the Bible that we have uh, today, I'd like to uh, introduce a brief presentation about how uh, to study the Bible. And someone has said in reference to the Bible, this book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. And I think that's true. We've said that the Bible is authoritative because it points us to a relationship with Christ. It also shows us how to live a life that honors God. It helps us deal with our sin. When we study and apply its truths, then we are changed. So unfortunately, too often we fail to study the word, and so we walk through life in our own wisdom. And this leads us down the path towards sin. As we walk that path, we tend to run from God and the truth of his word. And so sin keeps us from studying the Bible. So today my goal is to, to not just to motivate you to study the Bible. I, I hope that you've been motivated to study the Word throughout this course. Uh, instead, I want to help you know more about how to study the Bible a little bit better. So the science uh, of Bible study and its application uh, is called hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the science of Bible study and application. Inductive literally means from the text. Another common term for this kind of study is exegesis, which carries the idea of examining in detail. So in, in actually in John 1, 18, Jesus is said to exegete God. This means that he, he fleshes out God or that he puts God into words. Inductive Bible study is an attempt to discover the author's meaning by reasoning from the parts to the whole, and then to apply that meaning to one's current situation. We want to look at the particulars so that we can understand the general. And the primary assumption uh, of this method is that God empowers every believer to understand his word and its significance for our lives, uh, if we'll commit ourselves to the systematic study of what God is trying to say. So K. Arthur writes, Inductive Bible study draws you into a personal interaction with the Scripture, and thus with the God of the Scripture, uh, so that your beliefs are based on a prayerful understanding and a legitimate interpretation of Scripture. Truth that transforms you when you live by it. We'll discuss here in this brief presentation three themes related to inductive Bible study. First of all, observation, then interpretation, and finally, application. On the next slide here, I want to uh, show you a kind of model of biblical study and um, communication. And uh, in looking at this, first of all, the top uh, of this model uh, shows us uh, a diagram of what our study of Scripture looks like. So we see me, um, Scripture, and then uh, we see over here the world or the context of life our society, the people, our families. And those things impact the way we read Scripture and the way we think about it, the way we apply Scripture in our lives. So we can't neglect those. We should also notice in this model that the Holy Spirit is actually influencing all three parts. He's helping us understand the Word. He's working in the world that we're, uh, that we're living in, engaged in. And He's making His Word uh, come to life. The thing that is important for us to recognize here is that Scripture, for us, is a lens to interpret all of life. And that's why it's centered here in the middle. So when we do Bible study, first of all, there's this whole process going on in which we're looking at the world, living in the world, the spirits engage in our life, and um, we're trying to interpret our life uh, in light of the Word of God. The second... Uh, part of this diagram actually is a, a, a biblical communication model which um, describes what's going on in the life of the biblical writer. And so this is the, the bottom section of this diagram here. And we see that it follows a basic communication model of sender with the message in the middle and then the receiver or the audience. And of course the sender is the biblical writer and the receiver is that biblical audience, not necessarily us. It's the people that the writer, biblical writer was writing to. 
And in the middle there is the word of God. Somehow in this process of inspiration, the writer was writing to these people and God, the Holy Spirit, was involved uh, so that his very words were recorded in scripture there. We should notice, though, that even here, as in other communication models, noise can influence the encoding and, and decoding of this writing. Um, for example, if they use a secretary, was were they in prison, like Paul was in prison? Was there a conflict in the group? We know that this happened, uh, especially, say, in the case of the, of, uh, the Corinthians. Or were there false ideas, like in 1 John being circulated, uh, among the people that, that John is writing to. And yet, in the midst of all of this, this whole communication model and the complexity of it, the Holy Spirit is once again involved. So I hope these models are kind of uh, helpful for you, but I, what I wanted to demonstrate here is that we are not reading Scripture in a vacuum. The biblical writer was not writing script, Scripture in a vacuum. The context is important, and part of the uh, process of interpreting the Bible and studying the Bible is to try to understand our context and their context so that we can apply the truths of Scripture uh, to our lives. When we look at uh, inductive Bible study, then, first of all, the first step is this uh, idea of observation. In an observation, we ask the question, what does it say? Uh, as we consider uh, these steps of, of Bible study, I remind you that we should be prayerfully studying as we walk through this process, okay? So I'm going to walk you through a kind of systematic study method here, but we should bathe our study in prayer, seeking wisdom from God. We know that the Holy Spirit is actively working to help us understand the Word, and so we want to rely on Him. And when we speak of observation, our goal is to record basic facts uh, about the text so that we can develop an accurate interpretation of what the Bible is teaching. So sometimes uh, we overlook important information in the text because uh, we don't observe carefully those details, perhaps that the writer wanted to include. Uh, observation teaches us to see precisely what it is uh, that the passage is saying. Sometimes we fail to observe and observe more of Scripture because, one, maybe we don't like details, to uh, we fail to uh, observe what's not there, or three, we fail to observe correctly and, and accurately because we bring our own prejudices to the text. Well, when we look at this uh, first kind of step, the idea of, of observation in Bible study, uh, there are a number of steps that I want to propose. First of all, of course, you need to choose a passage uh, for study. And secondly, you should review the general content of the book surrounding your passage. What events lead up to your passage or after your passage? What is the main point of the book? What's the purpose of the text? You need to see your passage in its larger context. Thirdly, you should read your passage and answer um, the five W's and an H. Okay, So the, this is who, when, where, what, why, how. And... The question who uh, might cause us to ask who's the author of the passage? Who's the author addressing? Who is the passage about? Who are the characters in the passage? When we get to when, we want to pose questions like, when does this take place? If there are historical characters, when did they live? Um, when will anticipated events happen? As we move on to the other questions, uh, we see where. Where does this take place? What locations are is it referring to? Or what? What are the major events? What are the major ideas? What are the major teachings? What does the author talk about the most? Why? Why was there a need for this to be written anyway? Uh, why was it not mentioned? Why was something not mentioned uh, in the passage? And how? How was it done? How is the truth uh, illustrated? Moving on to the next step or the fourth step in this process of observation, we, we might want to mark keywords or phrases. Go through and mark up the passage a little bit. Are there repeated phrases or keywords or repeated phrases throughout it? Are there transitional words like but, if, or now that, that help you see the connections between texts that uh, precede and follow? 
are there terms of conclusion, like therefore or so, which help you see that, oh, this is actually synthesizing something that's been uh, inexistent here. You should note any lists in scripture. Note comparisons and contrasts. Identify words that you want to study a little bit more. Maybe do a word study on. And fifthly, uh, you want to reread the text on a word level, a sentence level, and a paragraph level. You might want to do some sentence diagramming. You want to learn about the immediate context. And in this process, it's also helpful sometimes to compare other translations of the Bible so you can see some of those small differences. So observation, what does it say? What's the context? And what can you get right down into the nitty gritty of it? What are some of the things that you can observe in that passage that might lead you to further study? Well, the second uh, step in Bible study is interpretation. We're trying to answer the question then, what does it mean? The key to interpretation is to set aside your preconceived ideas about the passage and depend on the Spirit to help you understand uh, what the passage means. It's important that we um, interpret the Bible literally. Uh, what we mean by this is that we interpret the Bible as the uh, author wanted us to understand what he was saying. So, we interpret metaphors as metaphors, figures of speech as figures of speech. And when we do this, we're in actually interpreting the Bible literally. That's what it means to interpret it literally. And there are a number of steps here for interpretation. Um, first of all, we want to identify and research important contextual factors. So we can look at the context of the events historical backgrounds, such as the political situation, the geography, religious dynamic, cultural tendencies. We want to look at the context of the author. What are his theological concerns in this book or in other books? Uh, what important issues does this author tend to address? Look at the context of the reader. What's happening in the reader's situation? What kind of things are they dealing with? And we want to look at our own context. How is our context or worldview impacting the way that we might be approaching the text? Secondly, we want to uh, move towards identifying uh, the structure and genre of the text. Um, I, I won't be able to get into this at this point, but there are a number of different genres in Scripture. Um, when we compare genres, that is sometimes called uh, form criticism. And uh, we also want to see if there are any other uh, literary structures that are actually quoted in the author's text. So, for example, Paul in Colossians 1 actually quotes uh, a popular um, writing in his uh, penning of Scripture. Thirdly, uh, we want to study keywords and phrases that are impacting the passage. And this is where you might want to get into uh, a word study. Fourthly, you want to compare Scripture with Scripture. So a good principle here is to allow Scripture to inter in interpret Scripture because it will never contradict itself. You want to interpret one verse in light of all of Scripture. Uh, is this verse quoted elsewhere or does it quote another portion of Scripture? Are there key phrases or teachings that are addressed in other passages of Scripture? And then fifthly, we want to move towards a theological analysis. So how does the major teaching in this passage uh, relate to the major teachings of the Bible? How does the major teaching in this passage relate to the major teachings uh, of the author? And how does this portion of Scripture relate specifically to our understanding of Christ and the whole idea of redemption? Well, thirdly, we want to move on to uh, the step of application. And here we're posing the question, what does it mean for me? So Bible study is not complete until it's applied to your life. In order to apply scripture, we need to know the word and know ourselves. We should seek to understand how the teachings of scripture relate to our situations. Uh, we should meditate and memorize scripture to allow it to, to work into our lives. And we should practice the truths that impact our lives. So when studying scripture and applying it to our lives, we're seeking to understand a universal principle that will impact 
our thoughts and actions. So a universal principle is essentially a biblical truth that is consistent with all of Scripture and has meaning for people of all ages. And in, in looking to apply, we want to ask these questions. How does the meaning of this passage apply to me? How does it apply to the church? How does it apply to society in general? Secondly, what truths am I to embrace, believe, or order my life by? And then thirdly, what changes should I make in my belief or in my life? Does this text challenge your attitudes or motives? Does it reveal an area of disobedience? So, in looking at in inductive Bible study, we want to go through this process of observation, interpretation, and application. Uh, at the end of your handout, I provided a number of helpful resources for Bible study. Uh, you might want to try to add some of those to your library. A number of them are actually available now on the internet, um, but I wanted to provide those for you. Thank you.